are cultivars of native plants uh, ecologically as effective as the straight species they're derived from? That's a good question. It's one of the most common questions I get. First of all, let's understand what a cultivar is. It's simply a genetic variant of a straight species. Some people call them native virus, but it's really just a particular genotype of a straight species. Some of them uh, have been, been selected for particular purposes, usually uh, to enhance the aesthetic value of the plant. And when you go to the nursery, that's often what's the only thing that's available. So people are wondering, you know, are they as good? If I'm trying to, to enhance the, the ecological performance of my landscape, will cultivars work? And the answer is, it depends. It depends on what the trait is that was genetically modified because uh, there are a lot of plant traits that are, are modified in terms of cultivars. We did a study uh, funded by Mount Cuba Center a few years ago where we looked at six cultivar traits uh, to determine what, you know, what the effect it was on insects. And we did it in a big common garden experiment where we planted the straight species and then all the cultivars around it. These were uh, traits that affect woody plants. So we didn't look at any flowers in this particular study. We look at whether, whether taking a tall plant and making it short impacts insect use, whether enhancing fall color impacts insect use, and putting in disease resistance, increasing berry size, um, taking a green leaf and making it red or purple uh, or variegated. Uh, those were all traits that we looked at. And the only trait that consistently discouraged insect use was taking a green leaf and making it red or purple. And that's because uh, when you make a leaf red or purple, you're adding anthocyanins and those are feeding deterrents. Uh, so uh, my recommendation would be stay away from the red leaf cultivars if you're trying to uh, support insect populations. So that was, that was a study that looked at, at uh, those traits, but we didn't look at any flower traits. Annie White at the University of Vermont has looked at what happens to pollinators when we change flower traits. And the news isn't quite so good there. Um, just to summarize very quickly, the chances that you, you uh, destroy the specialized relationship between specialized bees and their, their particular flower uh, increase when we, we create cultivars. Flowers have very uh, strict energy budgets. So if you, if you expand the petal size of a flower, you're often taking energy from the production of, of nectar or pollen. Uh, if we make a double flower, you're, you're removing all of the reproductive parts of the flower. Uh, and there's no nectar or pollen available. Cultivars that impact flowers often ruin the relationship with pollinators, but not always. There are exceptions where actually the cultivar is better for pollinators. So it depends on which trait you're looking, looking for. One thing that bothers me about cultivars is that they are propagated clonally, meaning there's no genetic variation in them. And in this day of, of uh, climate change, what we're really talking about is extreme climate variability Plants need as much genetic variability as possible so they can adapt to uh, the, the changes that are coming, that are here right now. So loading the landscape with plants with no genetic variability is, is just not a good idea.